Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to route out this baby Groot from the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, I believe. It stands at 10 inches high and literally about 5 inches across. As always for me, we've got our template ready. I've actually been using tracing paper and literally just tracing it off the screen from the tablet or computer. That way you can zoom it to the sides you need. On my laptop, it's literally five and a half inches, so I know that fits perfect for the piece of wood underneath. Once I've drawn around it, obviously, we pop it onto our piece of rough fencing wood. Take a couple of minutes to sand it down. It works fine. Bit of painter's tape to stick it on. I put carbon paper underneath. You can use graphite paper, just the same. And we'll literally just draw around that with a pen. I prefer to use a pen. It just stands out a little bit better from the pencil that you've copied from the screen with. Once we've drawn around it like so, that leaves us a nice image, as you can see from that, more or less. And that's what we're gonna to use today as our template. Now the idea is we're gonna route out all the background, so all this shaded area, just excuse me, I'll just turn this light off and see if it might improve things. Okay, so we're gonna route out all the shaded area all around there, literally by three millimetres. Once we've done all that, then we'll cut it out on a scroll saw. A little bit of sanding down, a little bit of shaping, nothing too fantastic. And then we'll paint all that shaded area black, obviously inside the eyes, around the body itself and all around the head. Then we'll sand it down and then we'll uh, paint a couple of white sections in the eyes. And we might even paint or stain the wood effect, just to darken it down slightly. If not, we'll have linseed oil just to darken it down. Now for me, as always, for the routing side of things, we're literally going to go around all these pieces here. I like to use CNC bits. They come in different degrees. Tens, fifteens. You can also get twenties, thirties. I believe there's some sixties out there somewhere. These are Dremel size, so there are 3.175 millimeter shaft on them. That will fit a Dremel, no problem, if you have the router attachment. Or if you have a full-size router, well, a quarter-inch shaft one, you require a collet like that, 6.35 millimeter. You literally just slot your CNC bit into the silver end like so, and the darker section that goes into your router. And then we can use this to route this out, no problem whatsoever. Now, depth wise, like I say, I'm working on about three millimeters on my last three or four projects, and that literally is the same thickness as one of your Dremel bits, should I say, one of your CNC bits. I made myself a little mark there like so. If I just grab one quickly. Obviously that one's a little bit too deep. And that one's just about right. So we can use that for further reference. Should we need so. Or back in the day I made a little gauge like that. Of different depths. If you want to go a little bit deeper. You can also purchase depth gauges. Off eBay or Amazon. But why? When you just make a little thing like that. Quite simple. That will literally just slot underneath the router. We set it to that depth and we know we can use that one to go all the way around this project. Now, like I say, all these bits to go around. Once I've done all that with this CNC bit, I like to use these N milling bits. They come in different sizes. We'll just find one small enough to fit in between these sections here. And we'll pop that on afterwards. Obviously, we'll set it to the same depth as that one there. And we'll remove all the background and inside the eyes. Once we've done that, we'll obviously cut it out on a scroll saw. And then we'll paint the background and sand it over and take it from there. Okay, we'll pop our 15 degree CNC bit today. Nice straight sides on it. And we'll start going around all these sections at three millimeters deep.
right, you can see from that, we've gone around all our sections with the CNC bit, 15 degree, remember that, so it's quite a nice straight cut, cuts really easy, say it's rough fencing wood, it routes out fairly nice as far as I'm concerned. Now normally I would put on my end milling bit and literally just start removing all the background, all that area there, remember. But on a previous project, I did find as I've routed it out, obviously by three millimetres roughly, then I've got to put a scroll saw blade on and cut round this. Obviously I'll be on different levels. This will be flush as it is now and the inner piece will be three millimetres lower. And it's manageable and you can do it. It just made it a little bit more awkward to keep on that line because obviously that line more or less wouldn't be there. So on a previous project, basically what I do now is We'll cut it all out with a scroll saw, just leaving a little section there and a little section at the top. That basically just leaves it in that surround and that will give a lot more room, a flatter surface should I say, for the router to run on when we come to clear out in between these sections there. And then once we've cleared it all out, we can literally just go back and just remove that top section and that bottom section there. Plus when we're using the router, just grab it quickly. As we're clearing that out, we can just come right to the edge of there. Remember, we've already cut that out with a scroll saw. So when we remove that section, we can just come straight over, go in actual over the section that we've sawn already, if that makes sense. Okay, so far so good. Right, the blade I like to use is, is a spiral blade, excuse me. A spiral blade, great little blade. They actually spiraled the full length. As you can see from that, so the teeth run around in a complete spiral. Good thing about those is that you don't need any too much turning of the wood. We could just start off there with the blade and literally just cut it all around. You notice there I've drilled two little pilot holes. Normally you're just coming from the side there, but obviously I want to keep this in one framework in one piece. And then we'll remove that section either. Okay, let's pop it on the scroll saw and literally cut the shape out leaving the top and the bottom bit as it is. Right, you can see from that, we've managed to cut round with our Pegasus number five scroll saw. Remember, we've left the top section and the bottom section, just so it leaves that nice framework. That's just a better area to work with the router. Now we've finished with the CNC bit, so we can remove that. And we'll pop in one of these end milling bits, you push that in right up to that little barrier there, into the same side. We'll set it to the same depth. Remember, we can use our little depth gauge over here. Or you notice I've removed a section just there. So we can pop that into there and do it the same section as that. And we're literally going to start removing around all the pieces of wood now. Around all here. And like I said previously, because we've already cut round with a scroll saw, we don't have to be too careful when we come to the edge here on this outer edge. We can literally just route off the edge of there because all this is going to be waste wood. Okay, we'll pop that in the router. Look at a nice pack of 10 of these end milling bits off eBay or Amazon. And then we'll start routing this one out.
Right, you can see from that we've gone all the way around with our end milling bits. That's cleared that out, no problem. It's still rough in areas, that's just the nature of the wood. Just cheap, cheap fencing wood, remember. While it's still inside the frame, I would use a T-slot bit or keyhole slit and just slit out a slit in the back there for hanging purposes. I'm just going to do mine a little bit later once I've removed it from the surrounding frame. Remember, that's just a simple case of cutting that section there and the one at the top. The good thing about cutting it out first before you start routing out is, like I said previously, when you come up to these edges, we don't have to concentrate too much about doing a nice, neat line job. You can just run off the top of there if you wanted to, basically like I've done there to show you. So it doesn't matter. Remember, we've already cut it out. What I want to do first is just general tidy up. We'll cut it out first, should I say. Then we'll do a tidy up with a flexi cable I like to use. That's simply attached to the end of my Dremel or any rotary tool. And I like to use engraving bits. These are just cheap, cheap engraving bits from eBay. If you put in Dremel engraving bits, you'll get bagfuls of these for next to nothing. They're engraving bits. And just while we're on, they're carving bits. They're a lot chunkier. You obviously wouldn't use them. On this kind of little project okay so we've got one in our flexi cable we'll cut this off first and then we'll get a general tidy up and then we should be putting a slot in the back and then on towards the painting side of things Right, that's enough sanding down for me. That's near enough for what we want for the side of the shed. Now for hanging purposes, I'm just going to put a, a slit in the back for the screw to go into. That way you can hang it up and it'll have no nails or screws or brackets on show. Now for that, I like to use a T-slot bit. It comes with a quarter inch shaft, so you don't need the adapter Reduce a collet, that will just fit straight into your router like that. This is a 5 16 You might see it from there, hopefully. There we go. 5 16 That's the smallest one I could find at the time. And that's just ideal for the size of screws that I use. Now, I've done a couple of sample ones on a piece of wood. And I use this same piece of wood every time. Because I know that is a nice size for the screw to slot in there. And you literally just slide it across. The more you have that into your wood, the tighter it is. So if you just have the edge showing, that will go on there really tight and that project is not going to go anywhere. So that's a, that's a setting I use. So I'll pop that in my router, we'll set it into there. I know it's going to go from left to right, says hopefully, and then we'll put exactly the same in there. We'll do that next. Right, it's painting time now. There won't be a lot of paint on this, to be honest. I have Googled quite a few images, and on Baby Grout, Groot, Grout, it does vary from picture to picture. So I'm just going to literally just going to try and darken the background slightly. Just a bit of acrylic paint, well watered down. Crawford and Blacks I like to use. And then I'm going to try and put maybe just boiled linseed oil on the front section here. And then we might just incorporate a bit of green. Just get it somewhere near, and maybe some black in the eyes or even the dark brown. So I'll go off and paint this, and hopefully when we come back, we put a bit of clear sealant on it, it'll be somewhere near. Okay, we'll come back later when this has been...
Right, that's it. This little project is finished. Now I gave him three or four coats of the crystal clear. Just give it a bit of a shine and a little bit more protection. There will be better finishes out there, no doubt. Just a case of finding one that works for you. But I'm quite happy with that. Remember, we've got our slit in the back to hang in with. And that's it. This little project is finished. So we have Baby Groot, I believe. It stands at 10 inches high by 5 inches across. Routed out on rough fencing wood with CNC bit to do the lines with. And then we use end milling bit to remove all the clear out at the back. Then we cut it out on a scroll saw with a Pegasus number 5 spiral blade. And then we use acrylic paints, nicely watered down to make more of a stain than a paint for the background. Then we covered boiled linseed oil on everything else. And then a bit of green watered down acrylic for the nice mossing effect. And that's it. That boiled linseed oil rings, that really brings the lines down. It looks like there's an actual crack down there, but it's not. That's nice and smooth, I can guarantee you. That's just a line in the wood. And I quite like that effect. And you can see that lovely shine on him there. And that's it. This one is finished. Have a go. Enjoy it. Nice, nice, easy projects. Just take your time and enjoy what you're doing. Thank you very much for watching.